Okay, welcome to this next um, part of this tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to build the um, the roughness map and the uh, the albedo or the, the color diffuse map um, for our ground. So just to start off, I'm just going to grab these and move them over to one side, and that's going to create me some space. So I, you know, don't have to just keep moving these over. These height ones and uh, you yeah, know my height normal and my AO are pretty much done so I'm going to leave them there. Now I can just work on the um, the other bits. Right so first of all we're going to tackle the roughness map and we can't really see very well at the moment. Uh, we've got this kind of grey going on here, this darkish grey and it's pretty, um, I don't know, pretty, it's okay, it, it's not exciting. Um, you know when I get the reflection on it it's very 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 reflective and that's all driven by this dark grey now now the darker the colour here the um, the shinier it's going to be so if I gradually move off to somewhere close to white you'll see that it comes uh, much more matte uh, but if I just used a colour it would be really dull so let's start to build that with something else now another thing that can help here to visualise what you're doing is to simply turn your um, colour output to black and that takes out an awful lot of the colour information such that you're just seeing the effect of the light and as you can see there that light is quite evenly spread and is quite evenly reflecting from our uh, model. So. If I take this and turn it to black, it's completely shiny. And if I take it and turn it to white, it's completely matte. And if I bring it back a little bit, oops, lost my moose, moose, lost my mouse. Uh, we'll get sort of somewhere in the middle. Um, but it's all very uniform, and we want to make it, you know, a little less uniform than that. So what I'm going to do is grab this. AO mask or this AO node and process it to start to form the basis of our um, our rough map. So if I uh, bring this out for example and then I'm going to invert it that's going to well, invert the invert the image so bearing in mind that white is shiny or white is matte <laughs> white is matte and you know, a uh, dark colour is um, very shiny. In our original map, we have these cavities in black, and I want those to be occluded. So in our new map, we want those to be white. So let's drag that and pop that in there, and we should immediately see a difference. And you can, but it's gone really, really quite shiny. Um, because we have, you know, uh, the full range here of sort of blacks to whites. Therefore, you know, some of it's going to be very, very shiny. Some of it's going to be uh, very, very matte. And ultimately, we want to bring that together because we don't want it to be, um, yeah, we don't want any bit of this to be shiny unless that's what you're going for, of course. So we can then select this noodle and press space and we could add the levels in here. Um, there's a few different ways of doing it, but I'm going to go levels to start with. And then we can reduce our output range. So I don't want any blacks and I don't want any whites. So I'm going to grab the black and move it towards the middle and grab the white and move that towards the middle. So that's equalizing our map out. So now I've got no really really dark areas and no really really light areas and now it's a question of you know adjusting this such that you know all of the the range I'm covering um, isn't too shiny so this midpoint would be like a mid gray so I'm going to push that beyond the midpoint and then I'm going to take the white a little bit over and now we should see that we're getting quite a nice variation you know, some of it is uh, reflecting a little bit of light and some of it is reflecting almost no light. 
you'll note that in the kind of crevices uh, where our big rocks uh, were meeting our um, you know, our ground plane there's hardly any shine in there at all which is as we want it and if you want completely no shine at all in there if you slide white all the way in that direction that's what we'll get uh, I think I'm going to give it a little bit of shine just a little bit like that okay so that's the kind of basis for our um, roughness map but you know if we just keep using this map you know it will be dull uh, we want to put some variation into it we want to add some interest you know we want to you know um, give it some sort of variation that isn't about the shape underneath so we'll do that in the next section okay so the first bit of variation i want is to take some of these bigger features that we put in here from these splatters um, and you know put some variation in the roughness so what we can do is use a uh, shape splatter to mask node and we can just take one of our outputs here the middle one the shape data one and plug it into that node and it will give us a mask now depending upon how many shapes that you've put in uh, will depend upon what you get here so initially it's set to one so we know that there are four shapes in that pattern so I'm going to increase that to four for the moment whoops not five there we go and now I get the full set of shapes um, but you know that might be a little bit too much I want to have some sort of subtlety so I'm just going to reduce it down maybe to yeah maybe to two there we go uh, if you don't want the first two of course you can use the pattern end range and adjust it that way so perhaps I'll start at pattern two and end at pattern four uh, or even you know further than that okay so I'm just going to use one and two for the moment uh, but we could also add a random mask into that to take out you know a number of those to add further variation okay so what's left here is then to add that into our mask and of course we need a blend for that so pop in a blend I'm going to put the shape splatter mask into the top and into the bottom because so I'm going to use that to mask its mask uh, our effect and then we'll pop it in so this is copy as a default and because I've got a mask in here it's put pure white on all of these uh, but I don't really want that um, what I want is to have something else uh, I want to have black in fact so if I subtract then I'll get black and if we plug that into the output there we go now I've got some very very shiny rocks on top so I don't really want black yeah <laughs> yeah I want to you know adjust that but for demonstration purposes I thought it would be quite nice just to have uh, a very visual uh, look at what's going on okay so how do we adjust that so if before here um, we pop in a levels node there we go we can take our white output value and slide that down to somewhere near where we would want it to be and I'm just going to go about to mid grey there and then if I plug that one in uh, that mid grey is then subtracting from what's underneath and we're getting that nice little variation uh, it's still extremely shiny uh, so let's adjust this and take it down and down and down until we get what we want now as you can see as I'm looking around in the 3d view some of those mounds are reflecting more than others but not so much that you know it's really jarring uh, I think I might want to bring it down just a little bit more there we go that's nice 
Okay, so next bit is we're just going to use a, uh, a grunge map to put a variation across everything. So let's press space and uh, type in grunge. And we've got a bunch of maps that we can use. I want something with a bit of noise in it, a bit of yeah, overall noise. Not specific like this one, which has got kind of blobs all over the place. Something that's a little bit more overall. Uh, I think I might pick grunge map 11 because that's got some uh, nice cracks and bits and bobs in it. That's quite nice for uh, a ground terrain. And then we're going to add these together. So let's blend, so space and blend. And then I'll pop that one in there and that one in there. Uh, we're on copy, of course. Uh, so I'm going to just reduce the opacity until I get a nice blend. In fact, these cracks are black and actually um, the darker the value, the more uh, shiny it will be. So what we want to do is invert that. So let's invert it just for fun. So select that noodle, press space, type invert and pick the invert grayscale. There we go. So now our cracks are very, very white and in our map here we've got something similar and I can adjust accordingly so I don't know why I'm looking at the 3d view I haven't plugged it in yet let's plug it in and see there we go so that's it with just the grunge map if I come in to the uh, blend node I'm going to gradually bring down my opacity until I get a nice mixture so I hope you can see we've got some uh, features in here where our uh, grunge map is just changing the overall look uh, in places that has nothing to do with the underlying kind of shape. So that breaks it up very, very nicely. So I'm quite pleased with that. That's pretty good. Um, so you can continue like that. You can add finer and finer details. Um, for example, you could just put some spots across everything. Um, you could use a dirt map and repeat and repeat. Uh, but I'm going to leave it here for the moment. And uh, next we're going to move on to the colour map. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so let's have a look at colour. So the first thing we're going to do actually is just to change this to uh, white. So that we can see what's going on and i think i've got this rather too busy so let me just go back in my graph to my uh, blends on the original piece if i can zoom in uh, so that one's okay this one uh, i think the opacity perhaps should come down a little bit um it doesn't look like it but there is quite a lot of noise in there and that's causing a lot of this issue so if I put that to 0 0.05, we should see that changes a little. And as I go down this route of looking at the finer and finer detail, uh, we should start to see it flatten out a bit. No, it's flattened out a lot. <laughs> perhaps too much, perhaps not enough. Uh, I think too much. So let's try 0 0.08, just to get some roughness in there. That's better. I, th I think it was a little too kind of exaggerated earlier so that gives me a nice uh, look at what we're going for and now that will have all trickled through and come out in my map here so we're going to use this as the basis for our color so what I need to do is pump that into a gradient map so if I press space and type uh, gradient or grad I'll pop in the gradient in there and then I'll pop that in there and then we'll pop that into the color output there we go so at the moment it's just gray and white so what we can do here is on this node is we can edit this gradient so normally uh, if we go into the gradient editor if you click on the gradient you'll get some pins in I'll just drag that one out um, so we've got black to white 
Now you can estimate your colors as you want, so you can select a key, give it a color, and it will update as accordingly. Uh, but I like, or I prefer, to work from um, a photo reference here. So I have this one in pure ref, <coughs> which is a, of a whole bunch of reddish stones. Um, so I'm going to pick one of these to get a gradient out of. So if I click pick gradient here and then draw a line across one of these stones, the longer the line the more keys I'll get, um, I will get a result. Let me just minimize that for a second and that's how it comes out. And that's using all these keys you know to you know work out what's going on in terms of color. Uh, but it doesn't look that all that good and I rather think that the more keys you've got uh, the worse it is. So what I'm going to do is reduce my precision say to somewhere around there and then re-pick my gradient and I should get fewer keys this time. There we go. So the other point is that these gradients map from black at this end to white at this end. So my very dark colours, my very kind of black colours are going to be this one here and my very white colours are going to be this one here and between the two we have a lot of variation and that can work uh, but sometimes it doesn't. So I'm just going to have a look over here and see what I can do to adjust that. Well, actually my colour uh, is not the, the ideal colour so let me pick a different rock to sample from. Uh, perhaps this one here. That looks a little bit more uh, naturalistic. And yeah, I picked this one deliberately because it's got a lot of different kind of looks in it. So one of them, I imagine, will come out looking pretty good. And that one's not bad. Let's have a, let's have a go with that one. So let's move that down. So I've only got very few keys here because I didn't make a very long stroke. Uh, so this will be relatively straightforward. I'm going to take my darker colours and move it to this end. And then I'm going to spread my other colours between. Whoops, I've accidentally added a key there. Just use Control Z to undo that. And these are all rather uh, close together. So it's not giving much of a, a variation. Most of the variation I can see is probably coming from our reflection map. But this is just a base. You know, we're not going to leave it at this. We are going to update it. Uh, but I just want to show you, you can update these. So if I drag box over these, there we go. We have these deltas here. Uh, and one of them is delta uh, V, which if I take it upwards, everything will become lighter if I take it down everything will become darker so you can adjust them you know to you know give a, a broad adjustment uh, we also have a hue adjustment which I tend to leave alone because that tends to do that uh, we have a saturation adjustment so we can take color out or we can make it really vibrant oops I'm gonna try and get that to zero and which one's this one I imagine that's an alpha, but it doesn't actually uh, appear to do an awful lot in this case. Okay, so that's a kind of starting point. Uh, but of course I want to update this and I want to put some variation over it because currently it doesn't look very good. Or it doesn't look very detailed at least. So what we'll do next is uh, start to add layers of colour to this to you know, get to where we want to be. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so what we're going to do is add some variation in this now. So first thing I'm going to do is just copy this node here, the uh, gradient node. But I'll do that by selecting it and pressing Control D, and that will keep its connection to our uh, roughness map here. Oh, excuse me. Um, and now we can start to blend it with something. So first of all, I want to take our small um, 
splatter uh, information. I'm going to drag out a um, splatter node. So we'll have a splatter to mask. There we go. And then we'll pop a blend in here. I'm going to put that on the bottom into the mask. We'll put this one into the top and this one into the middle. And now it all looks exactly the same. But, but I can now change my color gradient. So if I get my reference up again, I'll click the gradient editor and pick another gradient from this uh, this image. So let's try something like that. And I'm just going to try and get to see if I can see what's going on. We can see, you know, there is a difference. I don't know why I'm zooming into the 3D view because I haven't actually done it yet. So let's plug that into the output. And there we go. Now we're starting to get some alternate changes. Got some in here that uh, kind of on top of our bigger rocks, which is a little bit of an issue, but I'm not that worried about it. I think the colouring is, is off. I want them to be darker. So if I select the gradient, I can go to the gradient editor and then select my keys and take down the delta V. And now they'll darken up. There we go. So now we've got some variation across. Now, uh, as we looked at earlier, we can control the patterns we're using here. So we've got up to four. There we go. So that's what happens if we do all of them. Uh, but that's you know um, a little bit much, I think. Let me just hide pure ref so I can see the 3D view better. There we go. Uh, so let's perhaps drag that down a little bit. Perhaps up the uh, end ID range. Whoops, let's start. Whoops, at two and end at three. Yeah, I think starting at 2 and ending at 2 is about right. That looks like a nice kind of variation across. Now, you don't really have to leave it at that. We can introduce some further variation here by manipulating our mask. So if I pop in a directional warp between these two, um, so if I select the noodle and press space and just type in warp, uh, we can have a directional warp in here now I can plug a noise in and we'll press space and pearl in and I'll plug that pearly noise into that mask or into that uh, intensity input and if I look in here and reduce and increase the intensity input you'll see it's moving around a little bit I think actually I probably don't want a directional Warp. I want to swap this out. Uh, I want a multi-directional. Uh, there we go. Multi-directional warp grayscale. There's our intensity. There's our input. And then I'll pop that into whoops, the mask channel, or the opacity channel. And there you can see we're getting some variation in this. You know, when I change my intensity you can see that I'm getting a bit of edging in and it's starting to you know break up some of those rocks a little bit which is ideal now if it's too intense which I suspect mine might be uh, we can always feather back the opacity here to blend that in a little more subtly there we go so I have to go quite a long way down to make it go away completely there we are okay so we can repeat that with the uh, larger rocks for example and if I drag out another one of these to a uh, mask whoops uh, where is it shape splatter to mask then I've got my mask for whoops come on double click there we go. I've got a mask for my bigger rocks and again I can 
increase the amount I'm going to do uh, by adding in or uh, removing different patterns. There we go. Uh, we can copy uh, this directional warp here. Uh, so control C, control V. There we go, pop that up there. And there's my input. Not getting much in the way of warping going on here. There we go. So I'm getting kind of a step to stepped feel around the edge of these rocks, which will give us a colour variation. Uh, we'll have another copy of this gradient. Control D. I'll plug that into there, and that's what we get. And then we can blend these together. So another blend. This is our mask. This is our uh, middle value background. This is our foreground. And that's what we eventually get. And now I can plug that into our output. And as you can see, I'm getting a, uh, you know, quite a, quite a change there. It's not exactly on the pattern. Um, and that's because of my warp. Uh, so I could perhaps feather this back a little bit to, you know, match it a little more. What I would actually like to do is blur it a little bit. So if I just pull that back to give myself some space and add a blur in. So space and then blur. We'll plug that in up the top. Feather back the intensity and then shift and click on this output and plug it into the output of the blur. There we go. Now it's really, uh, you know, feathering away, so I need to change this intensity really, really low to get it somewhere closer. There we go. This gradient again you know it's perhaps not the gradient I want it's the same as the little spots and I don't want that so I'll bring pure F up go to my gradient editor pick a new gradient and then select a different rock to work from let's try this one here that's not too bad but this one well that's a bit too close isn't it let's try again Let's see what a dark bit looks like. All too purple. And uh, well, I think actually when I did this one, it was kind of good. So we'll go back to that. There we go. And of course, on the blend, we can feather back the blending to give it a bit more subtlety. So there we have some variation across our thing. and. Of course, you know, back to this mask here, if I increase this, uh, the pattern ID, I'll get more or less depending upon, you know, how I set the start and end. Uh, and of course, I'll include a bit of random masking if I wanted to, and it will randomly mask out one of those uh, islands. Okay, so that's uh, a bit of sort of updating the, the base. Let me hide pure F and focus in on this window here with the F key. Um, next we're going to put some actual kind of variation across the whole map so that you know we we had some, some dusty areas and some you know um, maybe kind of mossy areas or you know just general variations. So I'll Okay, so let's put some weathering on this and for that I'm going to need a grunge pattern I think. Let's go grunge and on something that's directional. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I think grunge is perhaps not uh, what I want. Um, let me just type directional or direction. Here we go. I have some directional noises. Uh, let's try scratches and see what we can do with that. Now this is a little bit uh, kind of even so let me 
just change this a little bit perhaps some random angle a little bit of disorder Can reduce the pattern amount there we go we've got a size something like that we can always change it out if we don't like it so for this one uh, I want to well first of all we could need to blend it so if I type in blend there we go I'm going to plug our current leader into the top I'll plug this into the bottom and I want to base it upon this pattern um, so well yeah I do and I don't um, but let's do it just so I can show you how to convert this so if I plug this into here you'll get a red line which won't it doesn't work because it's expecting a gray uh, sorry a color input one of these uh, orange lines and what it's getting is a grayscale input so we just have to convert this first so if I drag that node out and just type in gradient so we've got gradient map so this is converting this into color so it's only black and white still but it is a color output so I can plug that into there so now we get this which is um, not exactly what we want so we can change this up so if I just draw the opacity back you'll see that that you know fades it out and if I plug this into our output now you'll see the effect it's having and largely speaking not a lot because I'm fading it out so much so let's introduce this back in and you'll see I'm getting some kind of streaks across everything now actually yeah I think I was right in my estimation earlier that this is the wrong kind of noise so let me type in directional again and I'll, I'll use a uh, noise one it's got some nice variation into it so let's plug that into there and that into there whoops not that into there that into there there we go now I think we're getting something a little nicer let me go to the blend and up the opacity and we'll be able to see it in its glory so there we are so that's put basically white over everything which is not exactly what I want uh, so I'm gonna change our mode here to add and you'll see that it becomes very white then and now I can feather this back until it kind of naturally merges in there we go somewhere about there and I hope you can see that starting to really uh, bring the different sort of zones that we've decided de uh, defined together into something more coherent it looks uh, a little bit more naturalistic so just adjust your opacity up and down until you've got it to how you want it and of course we can change our directional blur here uh, we can change the direction for a start um, we can change the scale to make it larger or smaller rather in this case just to get some you know different effects so we can increase the disorder um, and we can even uh, up the angle so if I click into the 2d view here and press space this is the tiled view and we can see it's tiling um, but if I start to whoops not that one this one here I can rotate the angle and I can see whether it's actually maintaining its tiling or not just worth keeping an eye on okay so there we are we have our little plane with a bit of wear and tear across it and that's uh, bringing it together a little bit at least uh, let me take this opacity down just a touch I think this bit here on this rock is a bit too much there we go let's pull that down until it blends in nicely there we go okay so we're going to do a few more layers like this um, just to really kind of bring everything together and uh, get to some sort of final result 
So I shall talk to you shortly. Okay, so see, it's getting a bit out of hand now, so I'm just going to move these over to give myself some space. And then essentially we're going to sort of rinse and repeat. Let me move these down a little bit. Oops, if I can actually grab them. There we go. <coughs> okay, so another weathering layer. So if I pick a new pattern, and I'm going to... Whoops, it's not black and white, is it? It's B and W or B and W. Well, let's just type spots because I know they're in the spots. Yes, B and W spots. I'm going to use spots one because I've got a nice range of uh, colours in there. Let me just press space to get rid of that. There we go. So I'll need a gradient map to convert it to colour. We'll need a blend. I'll plug my current output into the middle our whoops not that one yeah oh yeah that one does need to go in the top and then that one into the bottom and this is what we get and now we can experiment with different um mixing techniques different layering techniques uh so let's try a min darken and that's what we get we can feather back the opacity a bit if i feather it right to zero that's what we get uh, at zero and that's what we get at one and I'm not actually seeing any change because once again I've forgotten to plug it in there we go let's plug that into the output there we go and now we've got kind of a dusty kind of look over all of our um, pieces so that's you know because it's a min dark and you know we we're essentially manipulating the colours underneath and that's given us some quite nice effects in places. Uh, if I left this at copy for example it's just going to be white and then I can feather it back you know to give it a kind of a whitish dusty look. So it depends what you're after really I think I prefer the uh, min darken on this one at a reasonably high level because uh, you know it, it's very visible across everything and that's helping bring things nicely together which I'm very 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 happy about <laughs> you could feather it back a little bit if you wished uh, but basically you're just going for you know the look that you're after and if I get down to sort of like a groundish level somewhere around here you know we're not looking too bad I don't think I'd ever expect to see it this close up um but yeah i think it's looking good okay so what else can we do well we could do that ad infinitum essentially uh and we can even switch these at, switch these about so for example if i didn't want if i wanted these to layer underneath here then i need to switch my blends so this blend would go into there which would create a circular output so I'll delete that one there and oops I need to delete this one here if I can select it there we go so if I move these upwards come on select you swines oh they're not they're not going to okay so let me grab these oh come on my selection technique is obviously off today now i can select these move those up there we go now i'll plug this one into here and this one into here to get a completely different effect so it will layer the kind of directional weathering over the the um you know dusty weathering as it were so yeah, just experiment, you know, do what you need to do. Okay, so um, I want to put something non-rocky in here. Uh, so we'll do that in the next little bit, I think. So I'll talk to you then. <coughs> okay, 
Okay, so we want to create some kind of mossy patterns broken up and scattered around. So first of all, I'm going to um, look for a fur node and let's try fur one. And I'm just getting this to, you know, get a general kind of uh, pattern. I'm just going to up the scale so it's nice and dense and we'll put a bit of disorder into it. So we're getting this kind of fibrous look. And I want to, of course, break that up. So let's pick a, uh, a grunge of some description. Uh, this one looks quite handy. And then we'll blend those together. <coughs> so let's type in blend. I'm going to use this as the mask. This is my background. And to gradient this oops to convert it to a color node and pop that in there there we go and actually no i don't need to do that because my middle one is already black and white so it will take black and white uh, so i've got these the wrong way around by the looks of it uh, so let me try to flip these over there we go that's what i want i want patches so i can adjust the grunge map uh, I can take out some of the uh, some areas with the, the balance and if I increase the contrast I'll get you know something that's a little bit tighter and then we can have a look at the, the mix. Um, the other thing we might want to do here is actually to warp this because I don't want it to be quite so how can I put it uh, straight so let's uh, pop a directional warp in oops not dr dir ir uh, multi-directional warp that's what we want and of course we'll need some sort of noise for that let's move these around a little bit uh, so we'll have a purlin i like a purlin because you can make it smaller and bigger depending upon you know how you want it to work so let's have a look at the multi-directional you see we're starting to get some waves here now and if I increase the intensity it will start to break up even more and as I said to Perlin I can bring that down to make them you know higher or lower well lower frequency at the bottom end a much higher frequency at the top end let's have a look what that looks like something like that <coughs> okay so I oh, want to colorize this of course so we'll put this into a gradient map again and for this gradient map we're going to uh, pick a new image so I've gone and found some dryish moss um, you know in, on the, uh, the internet so we'll use our pick gradient and Perhaps going to find a clump which isn't got too many dark colours in and try that one. There we go, let's close that and see what we've got. So one issue is that we haven't got a full range in here and that's when the auto, uh, auto levels comes in. If I select this nudo, noodle and type auto and put auto levels in I'll get the full range of blacks to whites on this which should have an effect on my moss you see that if I don't it looks like that and if I do we get a little bit more which is nice it might be a bit noisy actually so let's come backwards a little bit perhaps going to take the scale down here until I get something yeah, that's got some swirls and nice stuff in it. Yep. Perhaps my warp is too much. So I'll take the intensity down. There we go. And then we'll have a look. And see what the colour looks like. There we go. Okay, so you can see that, you know, I've got some very dark areas, there's very light areas. And that's a sort of reflection of the amount of keys I've got and the fact that these ones in the middle are very dark brown um, so if I go to the eyedropper again 
uh, I can try and get a different sample. So I have a lesser sample now because I used a shorter line. And that's, yeah, it's not much better, but uh, let me just minimize pure F there. Uh, but I can start to rearrange these keys. So these very dark keys up this end and in the middle, I probably want to be up this end here. And our lighter keys I want to be a little further down. I've got a key hidden under there. Let's pop that down this end. Of course, the fewer you've got, the less time this takes. But I think it's worth it to get, you know, a nice effect. If you think you've got too many keys, you can always, you know, grab one and then you can drag it upwards and it will disappear. So that one I'm going to bring further down this way, that one up that way. They don't have to be perfectly in order, just, you know, in a more sensible order. There we go. That one's probably in the way. Okay. I think that's all right. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's, it's not the best in the world. Uh, but it will it'll give us a good start at least. So now I need to blend that back into our material. So that's our current front runner. So let's type in blend. Add in a blend node. Put this in the, in the base. This in the foreground. Uh, I can use this as our mask. There we go. Now you see it's coming in. Uh, we can try to, uh, you know, find a, a better blend type. Let's try overlay. Overlay is quite good, I think. And then we can pop that into our output. And now at least I've got some kind of more organic-y colours, you know, in the uh, across the hole. <coughs> It might be, as before, that I've done this too late and I should have done this up here. So let me just move these around and then rearrange the connections. So this one would go in here. Let's undo that, sorry. This one would go in here. And then this one would go up here. And then our new output, let's have a look, would go down here. There we go. <coughs> so that dust layer overlaying it blends it a little bit nicely and nicer, I think. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. I think this is too strong currently, so I'm going to feather back the, the mix to make it a little bit more uh, naturalistic, perhaps. Okay, so you can go along like that for layers and layers and layers and layers and layers. Um, I haven't done a full kind of thing. I haven't made even smaller kind of, uh, you know, bits. Um, but, you know, at some point in time I need to stop this video. <laughs> I could be here for hours if I go down to the nth degree. Um, so the last thing I want to do is just see if I can add a little bit to this by using... Um, one of our previously used maps. I think perhaps our uh, occlusion map or maybe some even before that. Okay, so I will talk to you in the next video. Okay, so what I'm going to do is create a new version of this ambient occlusion. So if I drag this out here and type in ambient We'll have the HBAO, and I'm going to drag this over to somewhere near the end of the chain. So the reason I've selected a new uh, or created a new version is because I can now adjust how this behaves. So if I, for example, turn the height depth up, we'll get a lot of dark and a lot of detail. Um, but I don't necessarily want that. I want it to be a little bit paler. 
if I bring this back a little bit if, yeah if I take it all the way to zero I'm not going to have anything if I take it all the way up I get a lot of uh, a lot of spread so just adjust that as to how you want it now <clears throat> I want to use this to adjust this image to give it a little bit of that uh, baked in detail so I'll press space and what shall we do uh, we'll have a blend I'll pop that over there I'll pop that in the middle and we'll have this as the um, the opacity the mask and then I need a gradient to convert this to some sort of color and then I'll pop that in the top so that's what it looks like at default and if I feather it back you know we'll get sort of somewhere between the two now it might be that actually the white here is is what it's exposing but actually what I'm interested in is the the darker areas I want to darken those up so let me select that noodle press space and invert and now we get a completely different look so let me feather this right up see it's much 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 more subtle uh, and also I need to plug that into my gradient map to get a real idea of what it's doing and it's just sort of darkening up some edges in the in the detail if I take this down you'll see that it's much much lighter without it and as I feather it up I get a little bit more of that detail I'm getting a lot of noise in it uh, which I'm not especially happy about um, but we could perhaps do something about that if I pull this back here and actually put that out to a levels node so in this levels I want uh, less detail so what we want to do is take out some of the output and if I drag this one down we'll see that that starts to really darken it up if I take that up it uh, you know, takes the darks out uh, I could adjust my greys I think I want to adjust that more towards white let's increase that again and just keep going until we get somewhere near where we want to be I can crush my whites down a bit to bring them in a little bit later that will brighten things up but you know the more I brighten things up the more detail I get back so it's a bit of a balancing job there we go somewhere around there perhaps and I'll pop that up there I'll pop that in there and now if we feather this there is something is happening but it's not an awful lot and that's probably because I've really really messed the levels about uh, so now I want to bring this out and put it back to auto so I get the full range again uh, but it should be slightly adjusted compared to that one see my darks are darker and my yeah my greys have uh, crushed down a bit now I've got uh, I've still got some spots but not as many I'll pop that up there and pop that in there and now if we feather it we should see that that it's quite subtle but you know it does do the job there we go and that's needs plugging into our final output there we go and I can see that darkened up a little bit uh, as we applied it okay so it's it's a little bit messy it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination uh, but that's my sort of general approach to you know creating a uh, a color map from height information and of course you know we did the uh, roughness map earlier sorry I had a old man brain freeze there uh, 
okay so yes we could always come back through here and you know adjust things up as we want them uh, for example on this one here which is controlling our uh, most of our feature uh, we could adjust some of that up to get a different blend uh, we could change it from subtract to add see that really uh, filled in those darks there we could go multiply and now they're super shiny uh, but actually we don't multiply uh, what do I do subtract yep now we've got it back to you know having slightly shinier uh, feature rocks rather than it being you know matte all over or shiny all over depending upon you know what you want to do so you know just experiment there's all sorts of things you could do there's all sorts of uh, you know options see I have some very shiny rocks there that's quite a good effect but I would feather that back so that they're a little bit closer and not too shiny I imagine if you you know added a few more details you could put some you know just some spots onto the the, the feature rocks and maybe have them looking like ore you know like gold or you know lead or metallic or something so yeah just experiment see where you go um, there's lots to do lots of different things to play with uh, but these you know this is the general process so i hope you enjoyed that i hope you got something out of it and i shall talk to you in another video